fly fishing is, is what kind of bugs are in the water. We kind of look at what's available. We say match the hatch. And then we move forward to what we're going to tie on and what we're going to fish. So this stream has stoneflies in it, caddisflies, mayflies. During the summer, I have seen crane flies around the water, and I've seen trout jump six inches out of the water to hit the crane flies. I always carry one crane fly with me in my box. And I have seen ants, lots of ants. In the summer, if you're up there and you see ants crawling on the, on the logs, put an ant on if you see any rising fish and fish it. It's an effective fly in this area. And then there's these guys. Can everybody see that? So there's a lot of stoneflies in here, and if you get there in the morning and the stoneflies have crawled out at night, carry a yellow stimulator with you. 16, 14. Here's another stonefly. And I did put this in so you can see them. This is in a little tray of water that I do when I take these pictures. You can see the gills all along the side there. Here's a little uh, <clears throat> winter stonefly. There are winter stoneflies up there. I've never tied a fly to imitate that, but I have seen them jumping for those. So. Of course, green rockworm, when I talk about caddis, that's one of the most popular flies up there for, for the nymphing. This is called a scud. It took me about three weeks after I found this to figure out what it was going on websites, and I figured out which is, a re which is relation to the scud where you see where it looks like a shrimp. And also the same thing that looks like a cat, I mean, a, uh, uh, the pill bugs in your, in your garden, they're a relative of these. So I still haven't figured out how to tie a fly that looks like this, though. <laughs> and of course, we got mayflies. This is a mayfly that hangs out in the slack water. Uh, found them on a little rock in the back eddies. You know, there's no current back there. It's kind of a, a very still water. And you can see that what, and why I put this is this one's meant to crawl around. He looks around. He, his job is, I guess, eating what he can find in that area. And this next one is, oh, the rocks, sorry. This is your prototypical rocket when you pick it up in the area. You'll see these are all caddis cases right here. You're going to see some lines. These are midges. There's, you can't really make them out here. There's a bunch of little mayflies hanging out in this area. And then there's some more caddis over here. So the stream does have some, di uh, some insect life in it. It's not like the lower Owens, but it's enough to keep a good population of little trout going. So this guy is a clinger. You can see how he's built to just really hold the rock really tight. He's built hydrodynamically. So I don't know the genus of these, but uh, one fly I know falls under the heading of catabatis, and the other one is kind of a blue wing olive. So. So this is pretty simple. This is my fly box when I carry it up there. I got a big stimulator, a little stimulator. These are stonefly imitations. I got my ants. I tie an ant body and I tie a all black. Um, it would be like an Adams, like you tie a, a parachute Adams and it's just all black. It imitates an ant or a bug on the water. I got my Adams here. I got my blue wing olive and then I tie a bigger, I guess, calabatus right here. And that's all the dry flies I carry up there when I go. And then here's my nymphs, nymphing. I got my little caddis case here. I got my green rock worm. Uh, I got my split case. I got my pheasant tail here. Prince nymph is, is what I use to imitate the stonefly nymph. Seems to work for me, although if you wanted to tie stoneflies, I know people who do. Uh, it probably would work a little better than what I'm using. But, and then we got a little WD-40. You use that to imitate a small mayfly, if they're small mayflies, or a midge. I think it probably works for both. And then this is the fly that I, I don't want to say develop because it's not. This is, this is my version of an elk hair caddis. And it imitates the elk hair caddis. It also imitates the stonefly. I tie it red underneath with big half of legs and then a high vis wing on it. And it, it usually, if the fish are interested in caddis or the thing, the uh, the stoneflies, this this will catch fish. If they're if you see them up and rising, this is an effective fly too. What size? Uh, I carry several different kinds. I carry like a 12, a 14, and a 16, and maybe even an 18. I tie them different sizes, depending on what I see on the water. And the whole reason we're up here, right? So this is your typical little uh, six-inch rainbow you catch up there. When the water warms this time of year, you'll be lucky to catch four or five of these, six of these in an outing. You know, 
when the water warms up and they become more active, you can have 25, 30 fish day up here with these. Just uh, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. And here's another typical little rainbow. So, and then if, you, if you're proficient and you keep coming back and you keep coming back and you fish it in all types of weather and all types of, of, of uh, hatches and what's going on, you can catch one of these guys. So that one I caught about three years ago and that was the biggest fish I caught up to that date. And then about a year ago, I caught this guy. Nice. So, you know, if that doesn't get you excited, guys, you, you're in the wrong sport. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and that was a fun day. I got home, I took that picture, I got home, and I was like showing my wife and emailing my buddies, and you know, that's the fun part of fishing, and that's why I'm doing this, is to share the experience of fly fishing and getting out in nature. It's the things that I enjoy, the hiking, the fly fishing, just being out there and getting away from all the stuff that we have to deal with and just relaxing a little bit. So. so some good flies for the area. And, and this pretty much covers everything that I've talked about. You'll see this slide a couple more times. You know, blue wing olive, elk hair, 18 to 12. Adams, 18 to 12. Yellow sallies, there's ants, there's crane flies in the summer. Typical nymphs, you know, for anything. We got pheasant tails, caddis pupa, prints, halo, flashback PT, the midges, you know, if there's midges, because there are midge hatches there, WD-40, <coughs> tiger midge, zebra midge, 16, 18, 20. So these are pretty much standard flies for the area and, and even into the Sierras. And things to look out for. So <coughs> I don't want to scare you. There are rattlesnakes in this whole area where you're going to be hiking. In the spring, they're more active. Um, I just don't go trampsing off anywhere without looking first or putting my hand in a hole in a rock when I'm climbing up a wall or something. I just make sure to be aware. I've been hiking up here 20 years. I've seen probably 20, 25 snakes. I've never had a problem. Uh, I just give them a, a wide berth and give them respect. And I know that during the spring, I need to just kind of make sure I'm looking where I'm going. So that's a tarantula. I don't think we really have a lot of problem with that. I just thought it was when I caught it. Hey. <laughs> This one, I don't know, you might be allergic to the next slide. If you are, there's block that you can wear to protect yourself. It's poison oak. Now, I'm not so that susceptible to it. I did a couple of face plants and got a little red on my face. That was about it. But I know of some friends that they get anywhere near it and they welt up. So. so now the East Fork is a completely different river. The West Fork was very narrow in terms of the canyon. Yeah, very overgrown. The East Fork does narrow down and get overgrown, but for the most part, it's a big U Canyon. And it is also some areas, if you walk back about three miles, it's some of the deepest gorge in the San Gabriels are there. It's geologically, it's a beautiful place to go for a hike. And there's a lot of stuff there. And it's a very open and beautiful canyon. It's a spring creek. Most of the year, it runs very clear. And during big snow years, it kind of turns bluish, like it's a glacier melt. And I'm not sure what causes that, but so. So this is, once again, this is the watershed for the East Fork. It starts up here at some springs and then flows down through here, makes a right turn and ends up in the reservoir. <clears throat> Here's a picture from up above. This is the road that you go in. Here's the parking lot. From this area, you're hiking down this road to a campground and then it's a trail up the river from there. You can fish this whole area in here. There are still small fish in there. Uh, they stopped stocking. It used to, be covered, it used to have a lot of stockers in there. There are small fish in there. If you can't hike up that far, you can catch some small ones in this area. This is looking up, up the canyon. Looks like a beautiful day to hike to me. So <coughs> we're at the campground now, and there's a sign, the bridge to nowhere. You've hiked about a mile, and this is where you get down to the water hike another mile or two and you can start fishing. And this is your typical look at the canyon here. We've got a big open canyon, rocks coming through here are worn because this is a, a river that's been wearing the rocks. Um, this is pool, you know, uh, uh, run pool, run pool, run pool fishing. Uh, in higher water, you have to be careful. If it gets really high, you really don't want to be fishing here. Uh, if there's Thunderstorms happening in the area and they're warning of flash floods because this isn't dammed Probably would go to the other side of the thing, stream and fish over on the west fork because that has a dam that holds it back This can this area can flash flood during severe weather so. 
This is, this is, if you walk up, there's an area called the Swan. This is where it gets very narrow. This is a big geological feature. It's on all the maps. Kind of looks like a turkey to me, but <laughs> so uh, anyway, that's an interesting uh, feature of the canyon wall. And this is your typical what you're going to be fishing in. We got a little plunge pool here. It runs around here. Then we got some runs down here. You can see it follows around and then it makes a, a bend down here. <clears throat> And uh, you just keep working the water. You're working up and below, up and below. So here's my buddy Rod standing in there. He's fishing up into a pool. Here I am nymphing. I'm nymphing through this this area. This is about two miles in. And like I said before, there are a lot of stoneflies up on this side of the river. When you see them hatch, they're all over the rocks. And that's when the yellow stimulator comes out. If I come up in the morning and I see these, we're going to put on the stimulator. Hope for the best. They are crane, caddis flies, mayflies, and midges. So and what I talked about, you see all these here? So those are all stone flies. When I got up there, all the rocks were covered with them. <coughs> I think they're night hatchers because I've never seen them hatch during the day, the morning, or the afternoon. It's always when I get up in the morning, I see them on the rocks. Time of year. Uh, this is a spring. Here we go. I took a picture of a stonefly that I caught up there. You can see that. Of course, here's our caddisfly, and then here's a midge. So all these insects are in the water. The mayflies here on this side seem to be smaller. Uh, they're all in the 18 range or smaller. When they hatch, they're they're very small. Uh, I don't know why that is, but the West Fork seems to have bigger mayflies and the East Fork seems to have smaller mayflies. And of course, the whole reason we hiked up to the bridge to nowhere was to catch some trout. <clears throat> so, you know, this is a typical trout up there. They're much lighter on top than they are the West Fork. They keep the par marks until they get to be about 10 inches, 10 inches long. And they were very silvery up there. And I am, I'm assuming that that has to do with the fact that the water, as you can see, is gin clear on the bottom. And uh, that probably reflects the, the uh, color of the stream, so they blend in better. So the West Fork, they tend to be very dark fish. Of course, here's another little guy I caught, a little eight-incher. Here's another guy. This is below the bridge to nowhere. As you can see, it was a high water year, and it has that color I was talking about. I caught this 10-inch uh, trout. You know, it's, a, it's about an hour and a half hike up into these pools right below the bridge to nowhere and uh, about four miles up. And there's some really nice pools up there to fish. Four miles from the parking lot? Huh? Four miles from that parking lot? Yeah, 